What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live stream from the Scalar Learning Channel. And today we are back with more SAT content. Just making sure we are good to go and the audio is working. Give me two seconds. Oop, did that not work? Here we go. All right. Are we on? Are we on? Yeah. All right. We're good to go. All right. So anyways, today is Friday, November 1st. Hope you guys had an amazing Halloween. I was a UFC fighter. That was really fun. And also did something over the weekend where I was a unicorn, very random costume. But anyways, welcome back. If you went trick-or-treating or went to some parties last night, hope you had fun. Now it's time to get down to business because tomorrow we have the November iteration of the digital SAT. And by the way, once again, I will be taking it. So I'm very excited about that. And we will uh, see how it goes for everybody. But before we get into tomorrow, I wanted to do my quick predictions video. And really what we're talking about is, look, if you've been doing the practice test and the practice material and, and working on material maybe on Khan Academy or from the College Board or the SAT Crash Course, which again, uh, we have a coupon code here, Scalar, for 20% off. I do recommend the SAT Crash Course. It's, my, it's the brand that I've partnered with. It's the one that I've made video explanations for. Uh, you're going to be prepared. You're going to know the majority of the content. You're going <clears> to <throat> know what to expect. You're going to be ready. What today is, is about some of these more niche, more difficult, more nuanced problems that we're going to go over that I want to make sure that you are prepared for. These are the problems that can often trip people up. So we're going to run through, I think I just have seven up here, and they're from a mix of pra uh, official practice tests that have been released from the College Board. So we're going to kind of jump through these, and I'm going to talk briefly as we go through the explanations of these problems, like what are the specific things you need to know, and how do you approach these from a general standpoint, okay? So like what I want you to be thinking about, and this is what I tell all my students is like, think about those critical steps that you wanna, that you wanna engage and jump into sort of immediately when you see a problem like this, okay? So you just go back to the basics. Now, one of the general strategies we would have to solve this, which is a mixture problem, is creating equations. I mean, we wanna do that in general. You see a setup, especially with a word problem like this, I wanna turn it into an equation format. So let's jump in right, right away and hit this problem. So it says, a certain alloy has a mass of 50 grams, 50% 50 silicon by mass, okay. So 50 grams, 50% 50 silicon by mass. 50% of 50 is 25. So just saying that there's 25 grams of actual silicon in this object. The sample is created by combining two different pieces of alloys. The first piece was 30% silicon. So we've got 30% of some first piece, which I don't know what it is. Uh, and the second piece was 80% silicon, right? So 80% of the second one is equal to the, you know, total amount of the silicon in the second thing. And the two together is equal to the total amount of silicon, which is 25, okay? Then the second equation that we have, by the way, that they we didn't explicitly read here, is that, wait a minute, the first two just, you know, not taking any percentage, just the first two alone added together has a total of 50 grams of mass. So now we have two equations, we've created a system, and we can solve from here. Now you can solve this algebraically, or you can solve this in Desmos, but then it asks, what is the mass in grams of silicon in the second piece? The second piece is the one that's 80%, meaning it's Y. Okay, let's let's check it out. And, oh, and by the way, it's not the actual value of Y, it's the amount of silicon in Y, so it's actually 0.8 Y. I'm just gonna show you this in Desmos. Let's, let's plug it in, 0 0.3 plus 0 0.8 equals 25. Hold on, 0.3X plus 0.8Y equals 25, and then we have X plus Y equals 50. <clears throat> and then let's look at the intersection. Hold on, boom. And there's my Y value, which is 20. But again, we need 0.8 of 20, 80% of 20, and that is 16. So my final answer in this case would be 16. That's how you do a mixture problem. Again, turn it into a nice system of equations, and you're good to go. Plug it into Desmos. Next, we have one of these funky percent problems. And... I feel like these are coming up almost every time on these practice tests, and I definitely think you should be aware of these percent problems. And just, it's more of a language situation, right? So when they say P percent greater versus P percent of, that's a distinction that you need to be mindful of. If I say something is 70% of something else, right? Okay, so seven, X is, you know, uh, or sorry, 70% of X is equal to Y. There we go. But if I then instead said, X is 70% greater than Y or something like that. No, let's do it the other way. Y is 70% greater than X. 
So 70% greater, now we're doing a 70% add-on to the original, now it's a 1.7x, or x plus 70% of itself, 70% of x. But anyways, let's look at this problem, let's break it down. 210 is p percent greater than 30. So again, it's that same language. 210 is, is is usually synonymous with equal, p percent greater than 30. So it's not p percent of 30. It wouldn't be p as a percentage. I could represent like, you know, p out of 100, right? Uh, would be would be that percent. p percent of 30. It's p percent greater than 30. So we're taking, I could say, uh, I could do it like this. I could say 100 plus p over 100, or maybe an easier way, I think, in this setup is P percent of 30 greater than 30. So we're adding it back onto 30. Now we have an equation. Now you go ahead and solve once we have this equation. Beautiful framework, minus 30. We have 180 equals uh, 30 over 100, which is going to simplify to 3 over 10 P. To isolate, we're going to multiply both sides by that reciprocal. We've got 10 over 3, boom, boom. And we've got P is equal to uh, what is that? 60 times 10 is 600. Hold on. Wait, wait, what? Oh yeah. 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 Sorry. P is the percent. So that is 600%. So 600% greater. That makes sense. 600% of 30 is 180 and then 180 plus 30 gets you back to 210. Okay. Moving on. Here we go. I really do think density is going to show up again, or, I mean, there's a good chance. Okay. But let's just say I, I do think that this seems to be part of the college word trend. I don't know why. And they love to ask about density without giving the formula for density. So just so you know, density is equal to mass divided by volume, a quick reminder there. And then now it's just plug and chug. An object has a mass of 168, a volume of 24, right? So mass divided by volume equals density. That goes in, uh, what is that, eight, seven, seven, seven times. That goes in seven times, which means A is the winner. Uh, the density is, what is it, 7 grams per cubic centimeter. Boom, done. Very nice. Next. I do think they are going to ask something about, or I think it's highly likely they're going to ask something about standard deviation, okay? So standard deviation is, again, the spread of the data. Median, you know, right? Median, hopefully you know from, from my critical concept videos. That is the middle of the data set when it's ordered from least to greatest, which both of these are, right, in this nice plot. So uh, how many values do we have? 1, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, uh, 17 there. 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, both of these are odd numbers. I think they both have exactly 17. And the middle value is literally going to be the middle value. So they both have a median right there at 13, right? Even though they have 3 at 13, the middle of all of this would be, I guess, like that point, right? So they both have the same medians. But when they talk about standard deviation, you don't even need to calculate it. Although I guess you could now on Desmos if you wanted to. But don't even get bogged down in that. They're not expecting you to calculate it. They've never expected you to calculate it. You just need to identify the difference in standard deviation. And that is the spread. Which data set is more spread out or spread away from the center, okay? And 13 is the center. 13 is the center for both. It's a slight nuanced difference, but I'd say B has a slightly bigger standard deviation because look, you have less kind of on the outside for A and more here packed in. Whereas here, you know, your center, sorry, I should really should have highlighted this. You have more packed in there. Here, your center is just kind of one piece by itself. And those other two that are here are kind of spread now to the edges, meaning the data is more spread out, spread away. That translates to a larger standard deviation. So, uh, well, these are definitely not equal because B is bigger. Um, these are equal. So one is true. A is the winner. Done. Okay, moving on. Now we have the distinction of length to area and how, how those relate. And this is a very important question. Uh, I do think you're going to see something like this as well. Again, one of those nuanced questions. So you might say, oh, well, 4.36 uh, square miles to convert to yards. I just use this conversion. But again, this is length. We're talking about area. Okay. So how do we, how do we actually make a conversion of area instead? So remember this. If the length is 1 to 1760 for miles to yards, the area, since area is length squared, it's just that simple, okay? The, the unit conversion for the area is whatever we had in length squared to whatever we had in length squared. This is my proportion, and now we can use this to convert. So we can say 4.36 square miles 
versus yards squared, which is what we don't know, is equivalent to one mile squared, which is equivalent to 1760 uh, squared, right? So there's the, and I could put one squared, but one squared is one, so you know what I'm saying. And then now all you gotta do is cross multiply and you see the answer is gonna be 4.36 times 1760 squared, which I believe is this answer. Let me double check. 4.36 times, this is where we use Desmos very nicely. And yeah, we got 13 million, whatever, whatever. And D is the winner, done. All right, let's move it along. Oh, we got a couple questions in the chat. Um, you perfectly guessed last time. Oh, awesome, awesome. So hopefully this is gonna be along the same lines. Uh, what's up? Uh, I got an 1140 on my PSAT, got, and I got 10, uh, 580 of math. I'm doing 550 to 500. Can I do 650 for December SAT? Absolutely, you can absolutely do that. Um, that is not an unrealistic jump by any means. Okay, but you got to put it in tons of practice. Got to put in the work, but you, but it's doable. All right, we got two geometry problems left. Let me show you these real quick because I got a hard stop in five minutes. So here we go. I, uh, I've talked about this problem many times. This is a mean proportional right triangle. Um, I just, I, I think, I, I've seen them show up on the later practice tests. I think there's a high probability that this is going to be one of the tougher problems that's going to be given on mod two. So let's talk about it without further ado. First thing, I'm going to fill in the diagram with what they give us. That's 121 over three is AD. Let me make this a little bit less thick. Hold on. Let's go here. Here, We got 121 over, ah, it's green. Hold on. I'm going to make it black. Okay, 121 over 3, and then we got AB over here is equal to 11 rad 130 over 3. What is the length of DC? So, DC is this right here. Now, one of the things you're going to remember, need to remember with this is we've got, with, with a mean proportional right triangle, meaning a big dog dropping in altitude, we create three similar right triangles, this one, this one, and the big dog, okay? So, if they're talking about, a, uh, you know, this side, it, it's we can set up equivalent proportions, okay? So think about it like this, right? In this triangle right here, we have, um, actually wait, do I want that triangle? Hold on, length of DC, wait, let me look at this for one more second. Um, yeah, okay, no, forget, uh, not this. So, so let's look at it like this, right? We have information for the big triangle Actually, I could find this side using Pythagorean's theorem, but I'm not going to. And this kind of medium-sized triangle. And what you're going to notice is we got a little leg, a medium leg, and a hypotenuse. For the for this one, we got a little leg, medium leg, hypotenuse. And then for the big dog, we got little leg, me, uh, medium leg, hypotenuse. Okay? So we can set up some nice proportions. So for example, and we know they're all going to be proportionate, so check this out. I can say medium leg over hypotenuse of this triangle, which is... 121 over 3 over 11 rad 130 over 3 is equal to medium leg over hypotenuse of the big dog. So we got medium leg 130 over 3 over hypotenuse 121 over 3 plus x. Now we got a proportion. That's an equation. Again, going back to that basic principle, get an equation and then you're cruising, right? Now you got to do a simplify. I mean, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but you could plug this into Desmos and it will spit out an answer or you can cross multiply. Uh, I don't really have enough time because I got to go in two minutes. So, the, but, but this is the setup. It's about proportional right triangles. And then you take it from there. I got to get to the last one and then we're going to call it a day. All right, 21. So again, a geometry problem, especially where they don't give you a diagram, I think it's gonna be highly likely. This is a rectangle inscribed in a circle. So what am I doing right off the bat is I'm drawing in some sort of a rectangle inscribed, meaning on the inside where all the corners are touching the circle, inside the circle. Then it says the diagonal of the rectangle, let's draw that in, diagonal of the rectangle, which is gonna go through the center because it's an inscribed shape. Uh, is twice the length of the shortest side. So if this side is X, this side here is, or no, sorry. No, the diagonal is 2X, excuse me. The diagonal is 2X. Okay, now, and then it says the area of the rectangle is 1,089 rad 3. A lot of times these inscribed circle problems are special right triangles in disguise. This is no different. If this leg is X and this is double that, that's a 30, 60, 90, right? This is 30, this is 60, and then this is uh, X rad three, little times rad three. And now we've got some really good information because um, we can now kind of uh, reverse engineer this and say, oh, X little leg 
times, or sorry, well, we could say little leg, medium leg, but just basically length times width. X times X rad three is equal to 1,089 rad three. Now we got our equation now. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, area of rectangle, right? Not triangle. Yeah, that's it. We got the area of the rectangle represented here. And then obviously this rad, three go, rad threes go away. X squared is equal to 1,089. Um, and the diameter is going to be 2x still here. Let's take the square root of 1,089. It's 33. So x is equal to 33. Again, that's this length and not this length. We need the diameter, so we need to multiply by 2, and we get 66. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that made sense. I wish you all the best of luck on Saturday. If you are watching this video and you do like what you see, please click that like button. If you want to see more from the Scale of Learning channel, make sure to click subscribe. I wish you all the best of luck. We will talk about it tomorrow. And that is it. Thank you guys for joining and I will see you in the next video.